when you think of Harley Davidson, what do you think of? Do you think of big, heavy cruisers, or do you think of adventure bikes? Yeah. Looking forward to this. Let's get it started, shall we? <laughs> Sounds beefy. So you're joining me today on the 1250 Pan America Special from Harley Davidson. I got this from Harley Davidson Watford. Big shout out to Cam there, he's a really nice sales guy. He's got me out on a couple of Harleys now. Oh, this is the second one. FXDR, put it in the top corner if you're interested in that as well. After this video, of course. This is brand new for this year. And as I mentioned in the intro, it's an adventure bike from Harley Davidson. And on paper, this is a GS beater. I mean, so many people are going to kick off about that. <laughs> I'm not going to go through all the specs like everyone else does. You can see those anywhere, or there's a million and one reviews online for that. I'm going to tell you how it feels to ride it, what bugs me, what doesn't bug me, and what I really like. It's 150 horsepower, so if you're thinking it's a standard Harley Davidson kind of 90 horsepower jobby, no. 150 horsepower, massive great V twin engine, and this is a special, which means it's got all of the toys. Let's get cracking, shall we? It's like 20 something degrees today, it is boiling, and I'm in a leather jacket. I've seen a couple of reviews on this, and uh, a lot of people saying the engine, engine's a little bit dull. Uh, a lot of people are saying that it's a little bit jumpy around town in sport mode. I'm going to see, see what that's about. I think it's, um, I don't see how 150 horsepower can be dull. But I think the main thing with adventure bikes, which is probably why, is that most people assume adventure bikes are going to have loads of torque down low. And from what I can tell, this is a bit more of a high revy engine. So, initial feel. I'm in road mode. And um, it feels, I mean, I'm really comfortable. I'm a, it's a little bit of a stretch to the bars, but then you can just get bar risers or adjust the bars back, I guess. Just while we're dealing with all this, um, all this traffic and whatever, on the road, this is, I think they start at 14 grand for the standard one. Uh, once you get the special, the specials are 15 and a half, I think it is starting price. And the difference between the two is the special comes with, uh, electronic suspension, it comes with uh, sump guard, crash bars and all that sort of stuff but engine wise they're exactly the same no quick shifter which is one of the, like uh, it's not the end of the world but um, it would be nice to have a quick shifter on such a powerful bike this one's specced with the uh, adaptive ride height which we'll get onto in a minute but yeah this one's specced with the adaptive ride height and the wire wheels which I think look awesome, I'll show, I'll put some pictures in Yeah, there's definitely not a lack of power. You can just adjust this screen up, but my GoPro's right to the bloody way. There we go. Let's uh, put the screen up in the highest position and see how it's how she fares. Oh, it's warm. Yeah, anyone that moans about me having my jacket open, I know. I know I've got my jacket open. I don't normally ride with my jacket open, but it is 26 degrees or something and getting hotter. Right, let's come off here and give it a bit of the old beans. Right, second gear. Yeah, there's definitely power there. <laughs> Jesus. Do that up a little bit. So sitting, I'm sitting at what, 74 mile an hour here. I'm comfortable, really, really comfortable. I'm getting quite a lot of wind blast. Wind blast is just hitting the top of my helmet. I do keep hitting that, <laughs> that high beam light. Rolling on from motorway speeds for overtakes, sixth gear. Yeah, there's loads of grunt. She leans in really nicely. Again, I'm still in road mode. It sounds nice as well. It's got a really nice bark to it. Like, honestly, the biggest thing I can say right now is it does not feel like I'm riding a Harley. I'm going to say it again, I'm in a very commanding view, like, position. I can see a lot of what's going around me. The mirrors seem quite small compared to what I thought they'd be, to be fair. I thought they'd be much bigger. They look a bit droopy. Let's put them up a bit. There you go. That's better. Again, I've hit... So, 
That's one thing I'm doing quite a lot. I'm hitting the high beam switch. I think it's quite a weighty bike. You sort of bang in the middle of the range of a big adventure bike. So you're around the 230, 240 kilos, but it doesn't feel it, which is the nice thing. It handles and throws into the corners really nicely. Gonna choose your lane or? My dad rode this on Sunday, I think it was. And he said he wasn't a massive fan because he felt the engine was a bit gutless. But again, I think he's got a Tiger and he's used to things like the Africa Twin. So they are like grunty low end engines, whereas this is, so this is the new 1250 Revolution Max engine, I think they call it. 150 horsepower, torque's quite decent. I don't know what the torque is, I'll put it on screen now. Man, look! Couldn't find the horn. He got taken out. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I have to say it's really nice. It's keyless ignition as well, which is decent. The one thing <laughs> the one thing that I find really useful when I got to Watford Harley Davidson this morning, uh, one of the sales guys have taken the key home for it. So I was just sitting there like, oh, I've taken a Tuesday morning off work and uh, the sales guys walked off with the key. But they went, don't worry, we can stick a code in and it starts for you. And all it does is when you turn the screen on, I won't show you because it's a, it's a dedicated code for each bike. If you don't have the key or you leave the key at home or key goes flat or anything like that, the bike doesn't sense the keys in pre like presence. So what it does, is when you start up you get a five digit or six six digit code that comes up and you use the indicator just to move along up up and down the numbers put your code in press go and it comes up so as long as you know that code happy days and like you can start the bike you can run the bike and i, I don't have a key for this bike right now so if i get pulled over <laughs> it's gonna look really bad isn't it this has got the adaptive ride height now what that basically means is the bike lowers itself see this little symbol here the suspension symbol flashing that means the bike is lowering itself i can get tiptoes down so i'm five nine and i can get both feet down on the floor it is quite high though again i've just hit that thing <laughs> obviously hitting that's just user error isn't it it's just me being a tool and not knowing how to place my hands properly so yeah what you do is when when you come to a stop the bike lowers the back so like the shorter of us can get our feet down and then as you pull away it sort of slowly pumps itself back up so this this bike comes with seven rider modes road rain sport off-road and off-road pro or something and then you get two user settings now in the user settings you can decide whether you want that ride height to sort of lower itself down earlier or later or whether you want it to do it at all regardless that's a good bit of that's a good bit of tech obviously the ktm did it to a degree but yeah like i, I just it, that's such a good idea i have to say i mean i'd have to look into it to see if there's a way that i can actually lower the bike even more because like i said i am i'm not flat footing i've got the um toes and the sort of balls of the feet or pads of the feet or whatever you want to call it i don't know what they're called let's change rider mode shall we go to sport the throttle is immediately more punchy please don't kill me please don't kill me please don't kill me please don't kill me thanks right so we're in sport mode third gear 50 mile an hour yeah loads of go loads and loads of go now i'm in sport mode you can tell like you tell by the camera it's bouncing around a lot more it's a lot harder the throttle's a little bit more on and off but then i mean every bike does that in sport mode doesn't it let's be honest the only time i'm actually missing the quick shift is when i'm on the gas a bit <laughs> it sounds really good there's a really nice growl to the engine on a serious note, I genuinely think Harley Davidson's going to sell a ton of these things. This is like right up there with like cracking bikes. Oh, do you know what we need to do? It's the same thing we did in the Super Adventure video. One thing you'll probably notice with the screen here is that 
every, all the things you need, like your range, your gear, your speed, all that sort of stuff, and your fuel gauge down in the bottom corner here, they're all in really nice big letters. The one thing that's not big, and which I would probably like a bit of difference, top here you've got your phone connection, so you can actually uh, just, like you can connect your phone and get your messages and stuff. But your range, your trips and everything are all down here and your odometer, all down here in this corner here. But it's really small writing. It's fine if you're a young whippersnapper like me, but if you've got poor eyesight, I'm not young by the way, if you've got poor eyesight, you're gonna need to be wearing your glasses for that. If I do this, you've got all your buttons here. So you've got your navigation, you've got your music, you've got your bike stuff and then you've got your settings, so I can go into diagnostics. Look, got my tire pressure monitor, battery level sensor and all that sort of stuff, which is nice. Did this at the wrong time, didn't I? And then that button on top here is to go through your trips and your autos. So even though that is quite small, you get like all your range and everything comes up here, so you can actually go through. I can feel myself lowering. That's quite cool. And then, yeah, as I pull away, it starts pumping itself back up. It's fine getting one foot down completely, but for me, this is lowering itself too late so i'd have to go into the settings and make sure as i'm slowing down it's already lowering itself but jesus wet mate yeah this thing's like low to go it's definitely a revy engine you've got to get the revs higher but it is so much more balanced and so much more refined than I thought it would be for a Harley Davidson and adventure bike the, the guys that only build cruisers <laughs> or have only built cruisers for decades and they've got this thing which is they've just gone oh that's a lovely challenging part of the market let's build a bike that beats everything so many people are just moaning saying no it's not quite perfect uh, yeah but you, you if you compare this to a GS you got to think, this is Harley's first take it an adventure bike, maybe ever. I don't know if they've done one in the past, but it's definitely not been for the last 20 odd years. BMW have spent the same time refining their GS as Harley Davidson have, like, refining their cruisers. So now you've got to sit there and go, Harley Davidson are taking a punt at this market. They've hit this bang in the middle of the adventure sector. This is like between the GS and the super adventure for power. It's got all the tech on it. So as a first punt at a, a very competitive market, I think this thing's awesome. Let's go this way. See what it's like in town, shall we? This is the Yieldy Welling Garden City. I don't know whether it's the fact that it's 28 degrees or whatever it is today, but it is quite warm. It's not as hot as the Super Adventure. There's not like there's not a lot of heat coming, but I just I can feel that I'm sitting on a big bike kind of thing. Now this is massively divisive, I'm very aware. But I really like the looks of this. I thought it was ugly as sin. It's almost like they'd taken one of their massive cruisers' headlights and stuck it on an adventure bike, and I was like, oh, that's really fuck. That's really revolted. The more I see it, the more I'm going. Actually, it's quite nice. Like I said, my dad rode the uh, standard edition the other day and he took it out in like the green, like the military green. Oh, it looks so cool. I'm not a massive fan of this orange and white scheme, I'll be honest. Just sort of, well, coming away from point that handled town really easily. The, the khaki like military green looks awesome. It looks so cool. And also, again, same thing with a KTM. It's different. I get like every single adventure bike looks the same nowadays it's just twin headlight or like that sort of same kind of be like headlight bezel that you get on most things and they all look the same and they're all trying to look like a gs let's put it let's put it bluntly they're, that's what they're trying to look like whereas this it's stand out it's just like it's like the ktm like i said it's not in your face but everyone looks at it whether you hate it or love it you're still getting the looks whereas no one no one looks at the gs anymore the um special comes with electronic suspension regardless the adaptive ride height's an additional extra as is the as are the wire wheels now ktm the wire wheels are over a grand over a grand for wire wheels and they don't give you both sets it's you pay for the 
you pay the grand and you get one set of rims. These are 400 quid. 400 quid for wire wheels. And they're tubeless as well. 400 quid, that's so cheap. Like, that is so cheap. And it looks so cool. It looks so much better with the wire wheels as well. Uh, the adaptive ride height's about 600 quid. But I don't know whether I'd go for it. I kind, I might need to, I think. But I definitely need to set it up in one of the user settings. Because at the moment, it's not coming down soon enough for me. It's a great feature, though. And if you can dial that in to do like what you essentially want from it, a grade like absolutely ideal obviously the bike comes with cruise control this one's got heated grips i don't know whether that's an option i think it might be standard on the special so it's all show of suspension but you get like a uh, olin steering damper i think it is as well oh hit that bloody switch again <laughs> it has none of the characteristics of a normal harley engine So it almost feels like an inline four or like an old triple engine. These, I mean, oh, one other thing to notice, these are Brembo brakes and they are really good. I don't know what model they are, but they are so good. What's it saying? I can't even remember what it's saying now. As I mentioned before, you can connect your phone to this and all sorts of, there's a, there's a Harley Davidson app where you can upload routes into it. It's got like predetermined routes and it uses Google, none of the Garmin or anything like that. It uses Google Maps, which is great. You've got all of these, which is just like skipping songs and all sorts of things. The mode button's easy to get to. I wonder what it's like standing up while we're going slow. Ugh. It's a little bit slippy on the tank standing up, but you can just get tank pads for that. It's actually really easy to stand up. And it's, oh, it's also got reversible foot pegs. So you take the rubber bit out, flip them over, and you've got off-road foot pegs. <laughs> so good. To be fair, obviously, I'm not going to do it because I've only got this bike for a couple of hours. And uh, I don't want to piss Cam off by dropping it in some mud or whatever. But, I mean, I know it's press release footage. But watch some of the guys that are doing stuff like going serious off-road on this like the amount they're throwing this around a few people said it's quite low ride height for a lot of the off-road stuff so i don't think you can go that ham on it but um you'll be able to do some decent sort of gray lanes should we stick that in sport mode just hit that again yeah that i keep hitting that and i think it's just because it's pointed out so as i lift my hand up i just touch it Yeah, I mean, do you need any more proof? Do you need any more proof that this has got grunt? <laughs> I don't even know how many cars I just overtook then. What was that, three, four? If you're not looking at brand names and you were walking in with 15 grand and you bought this, this, I honestly, the amount of tech that's on this, I think you get more for your money than you would spending 15 grand on a BM, like a GS. You're looking, what, 15 and a half of the special and then you add wire wheels and the uh, and the drop 16 and a half grand so it's exactly the same money as the, the super adventure obviously the super adventure comes with the adaptive cruise control this doesn't so if you compare this to a normal adventure bike with none of the brands involved if you just compare this and look at it as an adventure bike it's got loads of kit it's comfortable wind protection's a bit naff but every bike is it's bang on the money. I can't even put my finger out. <laughs> it's bang on the money for a bike this sort of size. It's got more power than most bikes. It's got all the electronic suspension and everything. And it looks different. And I think it looks really cool. I'm saying it. I'm saying it. I like it. I wouldn't be opposed to having one of these in the garage. There you go. I said it. Police call, some knob is going fast on a Harley Davidson adventure bike? No, that must be wrong. Harley Davidson don't do an adventure bike. Oh yeah, they do. <laughs> it is quite tall, but then obviously you got the adaptive ride height option. And I think you can probably, there is a low seat height option. You can take the seat out and lower it down. So that's not a problem. Uh, there's a bit of vibration coming through the foot pegs. 
Um, again, it's a 1250cc engine, like it, you're gonna get some. There's never gonna be a point where you get a completely smooth 1250cc lump. As, it's a V-twin as well, so they're not exactly known for being massively smooth. The indicator switch's cancelling button, it's not really easy to find, if that makes sense. Like, it's fine, but there's not a definitive cancel. I, I am nitpicking, all right? I'm not, like, so far I love this thing. And I am really nitpicking trying to find faults in it. The throttle maps are really, like, you can see a massive difference in them. So you will see, like, if you're in sport mode like I am now, and you're not in the prime gear, it's a bit on and off. But, I mean, just change into road mode. And if you're really bothered about it, change into rain mode. Like, it, it, there's ways around it rather than uh, just sort of bitching and moaning about it, <laughs> to put it bluntly. Um, oh my God, it's so hot today. It was a little bit bouncy in some of the corners in road mode. Go, 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 go. Um, but sport mode, like, oh, it's so planted. There's probably other bikes I'd choose first if you want a bike that's mainly for off-road. Because it's quite a revy engine, you don't get all that low-end grunt that you want for off-road. Like, any other negatives? I don't know. I really don't know. Indicator is a little bit annoying and that switch is a little bit annoying. But I may or may not have just bought a bike that's got an even more annoying switch. So if that doesn't show you that that means nothing, thanks not killing me, then I don't know what does. Mm, the um, side stand is quite far out the front, so you sort of feel like you're kicking it forward. It's a very cruiser style side stand. I'll show you what I mean when we get back to Harley. Th this is the problem. I know a lot of people want you to slate a bike. Oh, it's so awful. But there's not going to be any bad bikes nowadays. It's just the sort of the minute details between each of them. So this bike it would be nice if it had a quick shifter and Harley haven't hinted that there is a quick shifter coming for it so I don't know whether there's going to be but we'll see everything else I think you just get used to straight into sport mode <laughs> yeah weird barking noise sort of thing from when you change gears it's like a whop I just, I can't believe this is a Harley Davidson. Like, I cannot believe it. Everything, I, yeah, don't get me wrong, I'm guilty of it as well, everyone's guilty of it. But when you think of Harley, you think of bikers in America, they're leather clad in like vests with their gang names all over it and their massive ape hangers and chrome and all that sort of stuff. I know some people love it. It's not my kind of cup of tea. I really love adventure bikes, that's where my sort of heart lies. I love a bit of off-road, as you all know. So this is appealing to everything I want in a bike. A bit of a yob, comfortable, has all the toys. It's not ludicrously expensive. And it looks a bit different. As Harley Davidson's first punt at uh, an adventure bike, at least in my lifetime. I mean, I think they've ticked it. They have dropped the mic on that adventure scene. If you're against this, or you think it looks ugly, or you're like, no, Harley Davidson can't do anything that's gonna beat my GS, go and ride one. Take it out for an hour. If you're near to the Watford area, give Cam a shout, Cameron. He's the one that, I, I mean, I get on really well with him, but he's the one that convinced me to take the FXDR out, even though I was sitting there going, yeah, Harleys aren't really my thing. Tell him I sent you, and nothing will change, but he'll just know that I, you've seen my video. Um, I was going to say, he'll give you a 30% off, but he'll kill me. <laughs> oh, has it got self cancelling indicators? That cancelled itself. Interesting. Right, back into Harley Davidson. This is where it is. Come down here. There's Triumph and Harley Davidson. Neutral's easy to find. Yeah, this is what I mean. That's where the side stand is. So it's really far forward. But yeah, awesome. Thanks for joining me. I'm gonna go give Cam back the non-key and tell him that I might buy one in the future. 
<laughs> Please, if you if you're even thinking about it, come down and try one out. It's awesome. I'll speak to you later.